give yourself two or three car lengths before you want to make that move, just like, unless it's the last lap. Charles may take that opportunity here right now because he's got a little more space. Right side of your screen, this uh, battle is for position with the 31 of Justin Allgaier and uh, Trevor Bain in the 16. That is for seventh position on the racetrack. And you're right, DJ Carl has cleared Clint. So now it is Stenhouse and Edwards running 1-2. Remember at one point, Ralph Fenway had the top three spots, but Trevor Bain is back in the eighth spot. Let's get an update from Pit Road. How about it, Vince? Well, Trevor Bain has consistently had a fast race car. The balance has been good. The changes have been minor. Just negotiating traffic and getting that clean air. You know, it's been a big feather in the cap of this Ralph Fenway troop that not only has Stenhouse and Edwards been to victory lane this season, but so has Trevor Bain. Compliment to the entire Roush Fenway team, not just those guys on the road, but those at the shop too, that prepare these cars each and every week. It's been a real good year on the nationwide side for these guys. It certainly has, and you can see Trevor still rim riding here in this mile and a half at home, Miami Homestead Speedway. Uh, the, gets the high side line, and there's all guy doing everything he can. Whoa, and he may have gotten yeah. too high. I think he did. I think he got up in that sand a little bit, maybe brushed the wall. Gathered it back up. Yeah, it just takes a little bit, a few feet too far driving into the corner. That's exactly what can happen. Don't see a lot of damage back there, but let's go back and take another look at it. Completely different line there. I think it's similar to what Stenhouse did. He just got up there just a little bit too high. See, so just rubs that wall. It seemed to hurt Stenhouse car when he did it. But you can see all the black tire marks along the entire perimeter of that wall. Yeah, it's been hit a few times by a number of cars as right now we've got 31 laps remaining eight different leaders ricky stenhouse jr his lead is now 2.6 seconds over his teammate carl edwards more features more selection more savings chevy's giving more at your tennessee valley chevy dealers get up to 6500 total savings on new silverados silverado gives you more for every gas dollar plus better stability a bigger payload and better towing Choose from a huge selection with power seats, Bluetooth, USB port, and more. Act now and get up to 6,500 total savings. If you've waited for the best time of the year to buy, get more now. Hurry to your Tennessee Valley Chevy dealer. 100% Black Angus beef, crispy onion strings, crumbled blue cheese, and A1 steak sauce. If you're not getting hungry now, you better check your pulse. And that's just the way it is. Introducing the new Steakhouse Thick Burger. Only at Hardee's. Cheese. The new made-from-scratch cheddar biscuit. For those who love cheese, now at Hardee's. MLS Cup 2011, LA Galaxy. It's McGee again! Donovan does it! Houston Dynamo. David Beckham looks to cement his MLS legacy with a trophy as the league's best team takes on a Houston side unbeaten in over two months. MLS Cup 2011, Sunday at 9 on ESPN. People think because I spent all my weekends at the racetrack, my life is predictable. Actually, things are constantly changing. And whether I need to protect my ATV, my truck, a new home, cover my home away from home, having life insurance, or a growing business, with Nationwide Insurance, I can bundle them together and save. You can too, up to 25%. So call Nationwide Insurance today to bundle and save. Nationwide is on your side. Call 30-day trial. American ethanol. From America's cornfields to America's racetracks, it's a brand new race day.
Back here at Homestead Miami Speedway, Trevor Bain has gotten into the wall again. This time it's a lot more severe. He's brought out our seventh caution. Yeah, I think possibly uh, it could have come from when he got in the wall before, but it looked like he cut a right rear tire down up in three and four. Right yeah. He either cut a tire and got back into the wall or for sure cut it down after he hit the wall this time. And he was trying to nurse it back around and almost spun it out. Yeah, I was afraid he was going to go up back into traffic right there. He's just fighting it. Let's go on board with Trevor and uh, he's got his hands full here. Right side. Talk about a I think that steering wheel turned about a dozen different directions. Yeah. Get it on the pit road, though, without anything else. Okay, so we need to flatten that quarter panel out on the right side, Cody. We need to get it flat if we, if we can. And that's what they're talking about right there, that uh, right rear quarter panel. It's acting more like an air dam the way it's shaped right now. Yeah, but here come the leaders now down pit road. So, here come the race leaders with uh, Jamie, I think we're going to send it to you first. That's right, the owner's championship battle alive and well. Denny Hamlin in the 18, four points back to the 60 right now. He said, tighten me up, down one round on the track bar, four tires, they have been flawless on pit road. Dave? Here's your champion, here's your leader, lower left. He comes in, he wants an air pressure adjustment. The car is just a tick tight at the end of that run. Four fresh tires, Doc. Big break for Clint Boyer. He was six left short on field. Four tires, air pressure, gonna free up a little bit this final run. Carl Edward down below, two rounds in the left rear. A little bit three, four tires, final stop, he should be away. Lacey stop over 15 seconds for Carl Edwards though. And it's going to cost him at a two-tire stop for David Stremme. And we only have 24 laps to go, and you're smiling, Andy. Well, I don't think it's going to pay off for Stremme, but he does get the lead. He's had a great run so far tonight. Yeah, he came in in ninth position. The big loser, as uh, you heard Dave talk about, Carl Edwards. He drops four spots. But there is David Stremme. something like switching from boxers to streets, but you never roll the dice on your truck. So go with the short thing, Ford F-150. J.D. Power Associates just gave F-150 their highest award for initial quality. Add to that the best mix of torque and fuel economy you get with its EcoBoost engine, and your money, baby. This is the future. This is the Ford F-150. You never know when a moment might turn into something more. And when it does, men with erectile dysfunction can be more confident in their ability to be ready with Cialis for daily use. Cialis for daily use is a clinically proven low-dose tablet you take every day, so you can be ready anytime the moment's right. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions and medications, and ask if your heart is healthy enough for sexual activity. Don't take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Do not drink alcohol in excess with Cialis. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease or loss in hearing or vision, stop taking Cialis and call your doctor right away. Ask your doctor if Cialis for daily use is right for you. For a 30-tablet free trial offer, go to Cialis.com. It all comes down to this. Three points, two drivers, and one final race for the championship. Tomorrow, Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart go head-to-head -to, -head to decide it all. Can Carl hold on to the lead and win his first title? Or will Smoke charge ahead to hoist his third cup? In the dramatic conclusion for NASCAR's ultimate prize, nothing beats first place. The chase concludes with a 4-400 at Homestead, Miami, tomorrow at 2 Eastern on ESPN. Hey fans, customize my gear, my gear, my gear, my gear, only at the NASCAR.com Superstore. <laughs> Four at 300 at Homestead, Miami is brought to you by the 2011 Ford F-150, built Ford Tough, and Nationwide Insurance. Enter this code at CodeSpotter.com for a chance to win one-of-a-kind NASCAR VIP experiences.
Back here at Homestead Miami Speedway, as we have 22 laps to go, we are under our seventh caution and a tough pit stop for the 60 crew of Carl Edwards is putting back out on this racetrack in the sixth position. We'll show you exactly what happened and watch the right front tire. See the right front tire changer struggles just a little bit. He's slow as they come off and he has a little hiccup here on getting all the lug nuts tight. This is the money stop. This is when everybody's supposed to be doing their best and all the other teams are probably going to make their best stop here. He can afford to give that up. And in the owner's championship, it means that the 18 is now finally in front of him and has a two-point lead. And there is the pit stop comparison as he loses those four valuable spots. Uh, at the wrong time, too. Jamie, what are you hearing on that 18 car of Denny Hamlin's? Well, it's certainly a team effort, but I had mentioned the rear tire changer, and that is Jake Seminary standing on the wall now. This entire team pits the 18 of Kyle Busch in the Cup Series, but they just had a pit stop with the track bar adjustment. There's Jake on the left-hand side. That was 12.2 seconds. That's almost unheard of in the Nationwide Series. They gained their driver three positions, and now there's just two points separating them for the owner's championship. Now, Edwards has clinched the most laps led for the 13th time this year. Hamlin's going to restart third. Edwards is going to restart sixth. James Busher gets the lucky dog up front. David Stremme with those two tires. He's on the outside with Stenhouse underneath him. Here we go. And Stenhouse spins the tires a little. And Denny Hamlin looking to get more right here. Here comes Keselowski underneath Stremme. Paul Edwards going hard on the outside. Stenhouse is going to have to fall in behind Carl. Carl wasn't joking. Look at this move. Look at Edwards. Woo, you got a big talk. run. This team owner's championship also oh, important. Look at Edwards. He, he goes by him like he's standing still. He had a big run off turn two, and it looked like he was going to get stuck behind David Strimmey, and he just made that big crossover move to the inside. So that quickly changes the complexion of that owner's championship. It puts it back in the camp of the 60 for Roush Fenway Racing. Strimmey side by side with Denny Hamlin. And there is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. getting a little loose as he's got Clint Boyer coming up underneath him. Yeah, Stenhouse had a comfortable lead until that last caution that was brought out by his teammate. Now he's stuck in traffic. Boyer going down low. The two-tire strategy is not working for Stremmy. Yes, a shame. They've had a great run, as Andy pointed out. All night was running inside the top ten until that caution came out. Came in ninth, came back out with the lead thanks to the two-tire stop, but right now he's got his hands full with the two of Elliott Sadler. Sadler has been penalized twice in this race tonight, and he's now fighting it out for sixth position. And yeah, we're getting down to it. It looks like Carl Edwards' car is just as good as he's been all night. So there is Sadler. His only goal is to win this race. Problem is, is that we got a spin, as that is the 82 of Reed Sorensen. He has turned it around. Still green. Still green. Still green. See if he can get it yeah, refired. And now good. the caution comes out. So when Reed stalled it, could not get it refired, and everybody was starting to come around again, NASCAR throws the caution for the eighth time. And it gives us a chance to talk about Reed Sorensen. That's why I've got to come in this time. I don't think I can make a background. Let's go back and show you what happened. Yeah, that has all the makings of right rear tire going flat there in the center of the corner. Yeah, it looks like it was low. He's just struggling trying to save it. He's got damage on that right side. He was 23rd, one lap down. Remember when he was third in the championship hunt and was unceremoniously discharged from Turner Motorsports? Hooked on with this 82 team and finished out the year. He's hanging on to the top five position in points. And he will keep that uh, number five position no matter what happens tonight. He's got about a 35-point margin over Jason Leffler. So, with only 17 laps to go, it is Brad Keselowski out in front with an old nemesis and Carl Edwards and our new champion rounding out your top three. I love Academy Sports and Outdoors. You've got great shoes, workout gear, golf, plus you got everything for the outdoors. Ooh, Danica Patrick. What does she know about sports? sports. Look alive. Academy Sports and Outdoors. I'm good. Right stuff, low price, every day. You're looking for the ride of your life.
you'll find it at Billy Ray Taylor Auto Sales in Coleman. I'm talking about sharp cars and trucks that'll get you noticed and deals too low to believe. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it and find it for less at Billy Ray Taylor Auto Sales. Come on, North Alabama. It's time you had a sharp set of wheels and a really good deal. Billy Ray Taylor Auto Sales, serving you from two big lots, Highway 31 North and 31 South in Coleman, Alabama. stores return to Las Vegas to celebrate another great year of racing. The 2011 NASCAR Spring Cup Series Champions Week. Fast. Fun. Loud. Perfect. If you like video games, you need to be a member of Gamefly. Join Gamefly. Choose the games you want online, get them in the mail, and send them back when you're done. Due dates? None. Late fees? Non-existent. I have access to every single game I could possibly imagine, and I get it for a low cost. Go to Gamefly.com now, click the joystick in the top right corner, enter World in the box, and get started with a free extended trial. And remember, you can cancel at any time. Product shown rated d 2 m You have to have this service. You call yourself a gamer, you have to have it. Italians never need a reason to celebrate. All they need is friends, family, and great food. And now at Carabas, you'll find all you need to celebrate with our new champagne chicken or our champagne shrimp and scallops pasta. Here for a limited time. Topped with a signature champagne cream sauce, these great new tastes are hand-prepared using only the freshest ingredients. So come into Carabas tonight. Now, purchase $100 in gift cards and get a $20 bonus card free. For Ricky Stenhouse, remember last year, 18th or worse in 11 of his first 12 starts. DNQ'd in race number 13. He was benched and basically almost out of a ride. And then all of a sudden, this year, a new man as he has rebounded with his two wins at Iowa, even with an assist from Carl Edwards. And now finds himself coming to Homestead Miami Speedway before the start of the race. Had to finish 37th or better. And early in the event, enough cars have fallen out that he clinched first NASCAR Nationwide Series Championship. And there you see the third driver to win the Nationwide Series Championship. One season after winning, Rookie of the Year honors. Now it's his first championship, but uh, Dave, if my records are right, it's also the first championship for his crew chief. Marty, on May 22nd, Ricky won his very first nationwide race. Mike Kelly told me they had their weekly meeting at Roush Fenway, as usual, Tuesday morning at 6.30 a.m. General Manager Robbie Reiser put Ricky's Iowa Trophy in the middle of the room and reminded everybody. One year ago, today, Ricky Stenhouse showed up to this meeting with his safety goggles on because he was ready to work on race cars he had previously wrecked. Look where he is now. Mike said, then I heard the loudest applause I've ever heard at that meeting, and I'm getting goosebumps telling you about it right now. Something tells you, Marty, there's going to be more goosebumps before the night's over. Well, and this last caution gives his teammate, Trevor Bain, a chance to get the lucky dog, get back on the lead lap, so he will restart in the 23rd position. A total of 10 cars are officially out of this race. Let's reset it for you, because Brad Keselowski will be on point with Carl Edwards right alongside, and Keselowski has selected the inside line. Stenhouse is third, Hamlin fourth. Remember the Team Owners Championship right now in the hands of the 60 by three points, because Carl has clinched the most laps led. They come down the front straightaway when they go by the strike. It'll be 14 laps to go. And Keselowski slowed up a bit, but looks like he still got across the line first. Yeah, he's playing a little bit of game right there. I think he's going to get much assist from that six car, though. And Carl Evers played it well, too, though. He was ready for that. Elliot Sadler on the high side had noticed the sportsmanship from Denny Hamlin. He was right behind Edwards, did not plow right through him. Now he's going to try to take the lead. He's going back. We go three wide for a moment, but boy, Keselowski says we'll shorten that distance up. Ooh, oh, this gets tight. tight. Oh, that was close right there. Were you talking about from first to second or second to third? Yeah, but oh, look, look at Sadler. Remember, this guy's had two penalties tonight. He is on the back bumper of the 60. Now slides up the track right in front of the 18 of Hamlin. Then he comes right back on the crossover move. Down that back straightaway, heading for turn number three. Carl Edwards is out in front, and we're
We're hearing that Danica Patrick has brushed the wall. Yes, she has. She has damage to the right front. She has been running in the top 15 all night long, but she'll have to come down pit road now with that damage. Another trouble right here on the front straightaway is Kenny Wallace, who's had a great year, is not going to end it on the note that he wanted as our 10th caution comes out. Tee it up again, but we have some great racing going on right here. Yeah, Kenny is 15th at the point of this crash. There you see Danica, she's got some heavy damage on the front right. You guys just get tires on it really quick. Turn, get the tires on quick so they can get her back out. She is on the lead lap. Here's what happened. See, he's trying to make that wide arc with Ooh. the car. Just a little too loose to make that happen. Yeah, that's more than just slight contact right there. She's got some bent parts. Yeah. And let's check in on what happened to Kenny Wallace. He's up against the wall and then gets a little push. You know, it was actually Strimmy that got up against the wall, and I think he just slowed up in front of Kenny. You're right. You're right, Andy. You just yep. know where to go. I mean, it just everybody stacked up behind yeah. Strimmy. The proverbial chain reaction, and unfortunately for Kenny, he's the guy who bears the brunt of it. And a tough way to finish the season for the 09. Kenny's best finish back at Richmond in the fall race in September. Came home in fifth. So the team has done a really good, strong job. I'll tell you, as he climbs out, and then listen to the fans, he is a fan favorite. Tell you, Jeremy Clements is going to get the lucky dog. That'll give us 23 cars back on the lead lap. And Kenny, as he makes his way towards the ambulance, salutes the crowd as they salute him here at Homestead Miami Speedway. He's going to take a few laps off and get this mess cleaned up, too. And what it means is we're going to have a good old-fashioned shootout with a championship at stake for the owner's title. Carl Edwards in the catbird seat right now, leading this race. Denny Hamlin running in fifth. All right, so let's get the uh, strategy here, Dr. Jerry Punch. What are you hearing down there? Thank you, Marty. Let's find out what Mike Beam has told his driver. Mike, uh, 10 laps to go, and you've told Carl, can, you, you want to hang on and win a race, but more importantly, win that championship. Are you confident he's got enough to do both? Well, I think so. Yeah, the main thing is we had to get in front of that 22 car, I believe, to lead at least another lap or two where we can be guaranteed the most lap at that point. You know, so it's just uh, it's a great race. You know, uh, whatever happens, happens. You know, everyone's done a great job. Carl, he's done a great job. You know, and he's really enjoyed this tonight, I believe, just because it is so, it's just so hard to get him tuned up for tomorrow night. You know, so uh, I feel like that we can we can do this, you know, and, but the main thing is, like I said, we got we need to finish in front of the 18, but, uh, you know, you got Brad, you know, he's such a good racer, and Elliot, and Clint, and, I mean, so, it, it's just going to be good, I mean, it's just fun, I mean, good fun, man, that's all, it's all, you know, it's racing, and that's what we're here to do, we've done about everything we could, you know, lead to most laps, and, you know, so it's like, if the, Good Lord's going to shine down on us. This will be good, but you know it's been a great year. And what better way to possibly get ready for tomorrow than to win tonight? How about it, Jamie? Absolutely. Well, that owner's points battle, these guys are trying to beat the 60. Eight points separates you and that owner's points, and you guys were within two points after that last pit stop. Is the car loose enough, or I guess he's saying it's too tight to get to the front? Well, we, uh, we've we been fighting free car all night, and the last stop there, we just took a big swing at it. And we've been about a fifth place car all night, and we knew that uh, our only opportunity to win this championship was going to be win the race. So uh, that was the plan coming in, and we took a big swing at it, and now we've, we've kind of jumped the fence a little bit and got too tight. So Denny's doing a nice job. I'm proud of this, this team. They've done a good job on pit road tonight all season just to have an opportunity to come into the last race and, uh, and battle, you know, Carl and that 60 team for a championship uh, is a blessing in itself. So we're going to hang in there. We've got a few laps left. We'll see what Denny Hamlin's got. We haven't given him the car he needs tonight, uh, but he's done a nice job with it. 
six different drivers in this car this season. Kyle Busch, eight wins right now. Denny Hamlin is fifth. And just seven races ago, that team led by 47 points. And right now, they're trailing. Let's talk to our in-race reporter, our new champion, Ricky Stenhouse, Jr., DJ. Hey, Ricky, Dale Terrence, you got it? Yes, sir, Dale, I got you. All right, champ, well, you've got that one uh, title out of the way here. I know you want to win this race and uh, kind of hog victory lane there. That would be nice. Do you have the car on a short, short run here to get that done? Man, I think so. I think we got a really good uh, Blackwell uh, Angus B uh, Cargill Mustang. We've uh, worked really hard on it, scraped the wall a couple times, but, uh, you know, I think that's just built in speed there. So see if we get a good restart on the outside. I got a good restart that last time. They just sucked down on us, got us loose. But uh, we're, we're in the prime spot. Need to be on the outside here. And hey, we're holding our breath up here watching you guys battle. Is it that exciting city where you are? Man, it's really exciting. I tell you what, coming off a of four when... When I was sideways in front of the 18, that was uh, that was about all she had. But uh, thanks for all the fans watching out there. We really appreciate it. All right, man. One to go. Good luck. Well, and here's Thank an you. interesting note because if he were able to pull this off, he would join some elite company. Take a look at this: Kyle Busch, Sam Hard, the only drivers to win the final race and the championship at the same season. That's pretty exclusive club. Yeah, it's hard to do. Too. You got so much on the line with the championship, I'm trying to win a race too. Up to do. All right, let's reset it for you because uh, a lot's at stake here. We already documented what's going on with the owners' championship. Carl Edwards is going to be up front. He's uh, right now on the inside with Brad Keselowski alongside. Then Elliot Sadler, despite two penalties tonight, is going to restart third. Clint Boyer fourth. There you see the owner points as they stand right now because Denny Hamlin is fifth with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. alongside. Then Sam Hornish Jr. with another strong run. Brian Scott, Eric Almarola, and Joey Logano rounding out your top ten. All right, who are you picking in this shootout here, fellas? I like Carl Edwards. I'm not sure I would have given Carl Edwards the inside in what I've been able to see. Plus, Elliot Sadler has been really good on these restarts. I think he can help Carl Edwards with a little bit of a push. Yeah, I like Carl, too. I don't... I don't think there's anybody that shown me they can beat him in a short run. We go back to green flag racing. There will be seven laps remaining on this mile and a half. Progressive banking from 18 to 20 degrees. Homestead, Miami Speedway. Pace truck is pulled down. Green flag's in the air. And boy, Carl is on the hammer. Keselowski going to try to take it away from him on the high side. Dodge horsepower we talked about earlier. Uh, looks like he's going to clear Carl. He does. We'll yep. get him back here. That was Carl's radio. You can see Elliott Sadler. He's side by side with Boyer for third. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the fifth slot. I think Brad had kind of expected Carl maybe to go to the inside. That's what we've been seeing Carl do there. He protected that. They're going to stay in front. Now six laps remaining here at Homestead, Miami. Here comes Stenhouse. He gets around Boyer. He's now into the fourth spot. Carl got a nice run off of turn two right there. They would close the gap a little. So there is your top two. They're trying to open up a little bit of ground over third place Elliott Sadler. Stenhouse on the high side in fourth. This time by, just five laps remaining in the 2011 season. I said nobody's shown me they could beat Carl Edwards in a short run until right now. <laughs> Kislowski doing all he can to hold on to that spot. And remember, we talked about this earlier. Keselowski's had seven top two finishes this year, including four in his last six starts. And here he is again. Here comes Stenhouse. He's looking for third underneath the two. And he's made this move work quite a few times. But a nice slide job. See if he can stand the throttle and get back up there. But that's Dodge horsepower staying out front right now. This time by four laps remaining. There is the gap between first through fifth. And here comes Boyer as he goes low underneath Elliott Sadler. That's for fourth. Boyer slides up in front of him. Carl is closing the gap up front on the race leader, Brad Keselowski. That shot there gives you just an idea of how fast it is entering these corners. These drivers right on the edge, running right against the wall. Now three laps to go here at Homestead, Miami. Keselowski's going to hug the low line. Carl's up top. 
They might have enough for a run here. Brad slides it up in front of him. Thomas, what's he going to do with it? Can he pass him on the bottom? It doesn't look like Ricky Stenhouse is going to have enough time to get back to these two. Only if these two get side by side could Ricky Stenhouse get an opportunity to get there. Two laps left, two. You heard the call. Just three miles remain in the 2011 season. And these two, how many times have we seen them on the mile and a half? Oh, check it out. Really trying to loosen him up now. That allows Stenhouse to get there. And Ricky's battle. making a move. He's coming underneath Carl, and he's got him. Going down into three, but now does he have enough time to get to the 22? He is carrying some mean momentum coming out of the corner. White flag is in the air. One lap to go. There's the white. Who turns one and two? Oh, check this out. Where am I? And the six of Stenhouse rim riding. Here he is, trying to close the gap down the back stretch. He's got to do it on the top side, I believe. Can the champion do it? He fakes to the inside. Keslowski goes low. Stenhouse is going to run it high. Here they come through that three and four. Ball. He's got, got the run in here. Heading for the strike. Who is going to win it? It's going to be Brad Keslowski as he takes the win from the pole. Our champion comes across second. Carl Edwards locks up the owner's title by finishing in third. And you guys talk because I need to catch up. Oh, the what a finish on the season for this series. That was an incredible finish. I hope you saw the 22, the 6, and the 60 all sideways coming out of turn four trying to win this race. That was the best nationwide series finish I've ever seen. Besides that win that Ricky got at Iowa the second one. going off in the background. A championship to be celebrated. 24-year-old Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And a 17th career win for Brad Keselowski in the NASCAR nationwide series. What a way to finish 2011.
What a year for Roush Fenway Racing. Win the manufacturer's title for Ford. Win a race for Trevor Bain. Win the championship with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Win the owner's title with the number 60 of Carl Edwards. They basically ran the table, got the goals that they set out from the very beginning of the season and into tonight. And that is back on the backstretch. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. waiting to be introduced to the crowd. First, let's go to Victory Lane with Dave Burns and celebrate with Brad Keselowski. In one of these races where it was supposed to be all about the other guys, whether it was owner's championship or driver's championship, you made it all about you, my friend. And how did you do that tonight? Well. This Dodge has some power, I'm going to tell you what, and uh, good drag, it's a little drag. Uh, but it's tough, you know, the, the Dodge motor is pretty powerful, but, uh, you know, it's seen all year long where them Fords uh, with the lightweight motor are just uh, tough to beat, they handle so well, and uh, right there then we had the power to pull away on the restart, but not the handling to stay in front of them, so uh, I was blocking as hard as I could to win that race, but, uh, you know, uh, great year for the discount tire Dodge Challenger and uh, the whole team. Uh, get on the pole and uh, win the race here today is a great way to finish the year and uh, just really happy for this whole program and uh, I want to say congratulations to Ricky. I, I know what it's like to be over there and be a champion and that's an amazing feeling so uh, a great year and uh, an awesome way to finish it for our team. Go a little further into that final duel with Carl because I mean it was tight and you guys made a little contact. Yeah, uh, I don't think he was very happy with me for uh, racing really hard but uh, I'm not going to give up the win. I want that win. He got it. 17th career win for Brad Keselowski first here in the Nationwide Series at Homestead, Miami. Marty? Well, that's why they call it racing. It's supposed to be hard, and uh, Brad Keselowski is one of the hardest racers you will ever see. As they continue the celebration with Team Penske for Roger Penske's team, his 23rd career win, second win here at Homestead, Miami Speedway. As the crew congratulates each other, and here comes Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He's making his way down the back stretch, heading towards turn number three, holding on to that champion's flag, number six. And the man who, of course, won the owner's title for Roush Fenway Racing in the number 60 is with Jamie Little. And he's racing like he had nothing to lose, but you did. The owner's title, but you got it done in the end. What a night, what a way to cap off your season. Eight wins this year. Take us through tonight, the two championships. You guys did your jobs. Well, first, congratulations to Ricky. You know, uh, all the Blackwell Angus uh, beef folks. Sir. I mean, Ricky it has come so far, and, um, and I think he's going to be a champion in a bunch of levels of this sport. So uh, that was huge. And my guys have done a great job all year. Eight wins, and we're so proud to have Fast and All on board. Ford has been great. It's Ford Championship weekend, and and uh, we wrapped up the drivers and the owners tonight. That was huge. And uh, Valvoline Next Gen, Wiley X, and all these fans that are here. This is This is cool. It did get pretty exciting there at the end. I kind of had to remember, hey, don't um, don't screw this up. And uh, Brad started blocking a little bit. I thought, well, if he's gonna block, I'm gonna bump him. And then I bumped him, and uh, it helped him and it hurt me. I, I didn't do it, uh, do a good job of that. But he did a great job racing. I thought everybody raced as aggressively as I've seen in a long time, and and everybody was real respectful. It was it was really fun. Perhaps a preview of what's to come tomorrow. Carl Edwards going for his first Sprint Cup Series championship. All right, uh, thank you, Jamie. And you saw the action there on the track that Carl was describing. Here are the final results. You see the top 10, and we already know about the top three. There's Boyer and Hamlin. Tough break for the 18 crew. That streak of three in a row for the owner's championship has been snapped. Elliot Sadler, despite two penalties, finishes sixth. Another good run for Sam Hornish Jr. Eric Almarola with another top 10 run with Brian Scott out, likewise, and Joey Logano rounding out the top 10. Let's uh, check in now with Vince. With Clint Boyer finishes fourth tonight, certainly not the way he wanted to uh, finish in his final ride in the 33, but uh, how was it this evening in this car? You know, it wasn't bad. It was a really good, it was a good ending to the race. Uh, Marim Chevrolet was just, we, we couldn't, uh, we struggled to turn, you know, uh, it was tight. You could make the rear end loose and, and slide out from underneath of it, but you never could make the front end turn good enough to run with those first two or three cars. I thought they were going to get in each other and give us a shot out of there at the end, but uh, you know, it is bittersweet ending. Um, Kevin's done a, a great job, um, you know, this program, given me the opportunities over the years, uh, you know, as we've been teammates uh, to, to jump on board and, and run and have some fun every now and then. And, uh, you know, all good things must come to an end, and, you know, this is certainly a good thing. Yeah, thanks, Clint. Fourth place for Clint Boyer tonight. Marty? All right, thank you, Vince. There's uh, a little resignation and a little disappointment, as you might expect, but uh, 
as Kevin Harvick said, he is excited about what is in the future for his former team, which will now roll into Richard Childress racing. If you're looking for Virginia versus number 25, Florida State, we're coming to the bottom of the hour, and that game is going to start over on ESPN News as we still have a championship to celebrate. So, again, ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Miller Light, Virginia versus number 25, Florida State. It's going to start over on ESPN News at the bottom of the hour. Let's check in now before that championship presentation.